Makihimanikea. Middle Length Sayings. Translated by I.B. Horner. S.U.T. Ta Central. Net. Maha Sekolade Isada. 77 Greater Discourse to Sekolade, and thus have I heard. At one time the Lord was staying near Rajagaha in the bamboo grove at the squirrel's feeding place. Now at that time a number of very celebrated wanderers, such as Anugara, Varadara, and the wanderer, Sekoladayan, and other celebrated wanderers, were staying in the wanderer's park at the peacock's feeding place. Then the Lord, having dressed in the morning, taking his bowl and robe, entered Rajagaha for alms food. Then it occurred to the Lord, it is too early to walk for alms food in Rajagaha. Suppose I were to approach the wanderer's park, the peacock's feeding place and the wanderer Sekoladayan. Then the Lord approached the peacock's feeding place in the wanderer's park. Now at that time the wanderer Sekoladayan was sitting down with the great company of wanderers shouting out with a loud noise, a great noise, talking various kinds of inferior talk that is to say, talk on kings, thieves, great ministers, armies, fears, battles, food, drink, clothes, beds, garlands, scents, relations, vehicles, villages, market towns, towns, the country, women, heroes, streets, wells, those departed before, talk of diversity, speculation about the world, speculation about the sea, talk about becoming or not becoming thus or thus. The wanderer Sekoladayan saw the Lord coming in the distance, seeing him, he called his own company to order, saying, Good sirs, let there be little noise, do not, good sirs, make a noise, this is the recluse Gotama who is coming. The recluse Gotama wishes for little noise, is trained to little noise, praises little noise. So he may consider approaching, if he knows that this is a company of little noise. Then these wanderers fell silent. Then the Lord approached the wanderer. Sekoladayan. The wanderer Sekoladayan spoke. Thus to the Lord, let the revered Gotama come, there is a welcome for the revered Gotama, it is long since the revered Gotama made this opportunity. That is to say for coming here. Let the revered Gotama sit down, this seat is ready. Then the Lord sat down on the seat that was ready. And the wanderer Sekoladayan, having taken a low seat, sat down at a respectful distance. The Lord spoke thus to the wanderer Sekoladayan as he was sitting down at a respectful distance, What is the talk for which you are now gathered together here, Udayan? And what was your talk that was interrupted? Let be that talk, revered sir, for which we are now gathered together here. It will not be difficult for the Lord to hear this talk later. Some time ago, revered sir, when divers members of other sects, recluses, and Brahmans, were gathered together and were sitting down in the debating hall, this chance conversation arose, indeed it is profitable for the people of Angamagadha, indeed it is well gotten by the people of Angamagadha that these leaders in religious life, heads of companies, heads of groups, teachers of groups, well known, famous. Founders of sects, held in high repute by the many folk, have come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. One this Purana Kisipa is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. To this Makhali Gozala too is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha. For the rain's residence. 3. This Ajita of the hair blanket too is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. For this Pakud Hakakayana too is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. 5. This Sanjaya Bilat this son too is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, 
the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. 6. This Nataputta the Jain too, is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. 7. This recluse Gotama too is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect. Held in high repute by the many folk, he has come to Rajagaha for the rain's residence. Now of these lords, heads of companies, heads of groups, teachers of groups, well known, famous founders of sects, held in high repute by the many folk, which is revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples? And how do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence? Some of those who were there spoke thus, this Purana Kisipa is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Purana Kisipa. Once upon a time Purana Kisipa was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, good sirs, ask Purana Kisipa about this matter, he does not know about it, we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Purana Kisipa, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking the good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Purana Kisipa's disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, you do not understand this Dhamma and discipline, I understand this Dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this Dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say, no sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning. What should have been said at the end? Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out your words, or unravel them if you can. So Purana Kisipa is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence on Purana Kisipa. On the contrary, Purana Kisipa is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this Makhali Gozala too is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Makhali Gozala. Once upon a time Makhali Gozala was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, good sirs, ask Makhali Gozala about this matter, he does not know about it, we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Makhali Gozala, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking the good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Makhali Gozala's disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, you do not understand this Dhamma and discipline, I understand this Dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this Dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say, no sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning what should have been said at the end. Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out your words, or unravel them if you can. So Makhali Gozala is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, 
live in dependence on Makhali Gozala. On the contrary, Makhali Gozala is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this Ajiha of the hair blanket too is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Ajiha of the hair blanket. Once upon a time Ajiha of the hair blanket was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, good sirs, ask Ajiha of the hair blanket about this matter, he does not know about it, we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Ajiha of the hair blanket, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking the good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Ajita of the hair blanket disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, you do not understand this dhamma and discipline, I understand this dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say, no sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning what should have been said at the end. Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out your words, or unravel them if you can. So Ajita of the hair blanket is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence on Ajita of the hair blanket. On the contrary, Ajita of the hair blanket is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this Pakud Hakakayana too is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Pakud Hakakayana. Once upon a time Pakud Hakakayana was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, good sirs, ask Pakud Hakakayana about this matter, he does not know about it, we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Pakud Hakakayana, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking the good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Pakud Hakakayana's disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, you do not understand this Dhamma and discipline, I understand this Dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this Dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say, no sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning what should have been said at the end. Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out. Your words, or unravel them if you can. So Pakud Hakakayana is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence on Pakud Hakakayana. On the contrary, Pakud Hakakayana is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this Sanjaya Balat this son too is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Sanjaya Bilat this son. Once upon a time Sanjaya Bilat this son was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, good sirs, Ask Sanjay Abilat this son about this matter, he does not know about it, 
we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Sanjaya Balatha's son, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking. The good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Sanjaya Balatha's son's disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, You do not understand this Dhamma and discipline, I understand this Dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this Dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say, no sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning what should have been said at the end. Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out your words, or unravel them if you can. So Sanjaya Balatha's son is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence on Sanjaya Balatha's son. On the contrary, Sanjaya Balatha's son is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this Nataputta the Jain too is the head of a company, head of a group, teacher of a group, well known, a famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. But, he is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting him, live in dependence on Nataputta the Jain. Once upon a time Nataputta the Jain was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. But a certain disciple of his let it be heard, do not, Good sirs, ask Nataputta the Jain about this matter, he does not know about it, we know about it. Ask us about this matter, we can explain it to the good sirs. Once upon a time Nataputta the Jain, with outstretched arms and wailing, did not get the chance, to say let the good sirs be quiet, do not, good sirs, make a noise. These are not asking the good sirs, they are asking us, we will explain to them. Then many of Nataputta the Jain's disciples, having refuted him, on seceding, said, You do not understand this Dhamma and discipline, I understand this Dhamma and discipline. How can you understand this Dhamma and discipline? You are faring along wrongly, I am faring along rightly. There is sense in what I say. No sense in what you say. You said at the end what should have been said at the beginning, and said at the beginning what should have been said at the end. Your method is reversed, you are refuted, you are caught out, go away and think out your words, or unravel them if you can. So Nataputta the Jain is not revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, nor do disciples, revering and respecting, live in dependence on Nataputta the Jain. On the contrary, Nataputta the Jain is reviled with abuse for his behavior. Some spoke thus, this recluse Gotama is the head of a company, head of a group, the teacher of a group, he is well known, the famous founder of a sect, held in high repute by the many folk. He is revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, and disciples, revering and respecting the recluse Gotama, live in dependence on him. Once upon a time the recluse Gotama was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly. Then a certain disciple of the recluse Gotama coughed. A fellow Brahmafera touched him with his knee and said, Let the Venerable One be quiet. Let the Venerable One make no noise. The teacher, our Lord, is teaching Dhamma. At the time when the recluse Gotama was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly, there was the sound neither of expectoration nor of coughing among his disciples. Any group of people who were waiting were ready for him thinking, we will hear that Dhamma that the Lord will teach us. It is as though a man at a crossing on a high road might press out a little pure honey, and any group of people who were waiting might be ready for him. Even so at the time when the recluse Gotama was teaching Dhamma to an innumerable assembly, there was the sound neither of expectoration nor of coughing among his disciples. Any group of people who were waiting were ready for him, thinking, we will hear that Dhamma that the Lord will teach us. And those disciples of the recluse Gotama who, 
quarreling with fellow Brahmacharis and disavowing the training, return to the secular life, even these are speakers in praise of the teacher, they are speakers in praise of Dhamma and speakers in praise of the order. They censure only themselves, they do not censure others, but say, it is we ourselves that are unfortunate, it is we that are of little merit, in that we, although we have gone forth thus in this Dhamma and discipline that are well taught, are unable for as long as life lasts to fare the Brahma faring wholly complete, wholly purified. These, becoming monastery attendants or lay disciples, live undertaking the five rules of training. Thus it is that the recluse Gotama is revered, respected, esteemed, honored by disciples, and that disciples, revering and respecting the recluse Gotama, live in dependence on him. But how many things do you behold in me, Budayan, for which my disciples revere, respect, esteem, and honor me, and revering and respecting, live in dependence, on me. I, revered sir, behold five things for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. What are the five? One revered sir, the Lord eats little and speaks in praise of eating little. That the Lord eats little and speaks in praise of eating little, this is the first thing that I, revered sir, behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. Two and again, revered sir, the Lord is contented with any kind of rogue material and speaks in praise of content with any kind of rogue material. This is the second thing that I, revered sir, Behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. 3. And again, revered sir, the Lord is contented with any kind of alms food and speaks in praise of content with any kind of alms food. This is the third thing that I, revered sir, behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. 4. And again, revered sir, the Lord is contented with any kind of lodgings and speaks in praise of content with any kind of lodgings. This is the fourth thing that I, revered sir, behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. 5. And again, revered sir, the Lord is aloof and speaks in praise of aloofness. That the Lord is aloof and speaks in praise of aloofness, this is the fifth that I, revered sir, behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. These, revered sir, are the five things I behold in the Lord for which disciples revere, respect, and honor the Lord, and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. The recluse Gotama eats little and speaks in praise of eating little, if it were for this, Budayan. That disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, there are disciples of mine, Budayan, who live on a saucer of food and on half a saucer of food and on a fruit of the bilba tree and on half a fruit of the bilba tree. But I, Budayan, sometimes eat to the full of this bowl and I eat more than that. The recluse Gotama eats little and speaks in praise of eating little, if it were for this, Budayan, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, it would not. B. Budayan, those of my disciples who live on a saucer of food and on half a saucer of food and on a fruit of the bilba tree and on half a fruit of the bilba tree who would revere, respect, esteem and honor me for this behavior, of mine, and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of rogue material and speaks in praise of content with any kind of rogue material, if it were for this, Budayan, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and, respecting, would live in dependence, there are disciples of mine, Budayan, who are wearers of rag robes taken from a dust heap, and who wear robes that are worn thin, collecting shreds of cloth from a cemetery, 
a rubbish heap or shop and having made up an outer cloak, they wear it. I, Budain, sometimes wear householders' rope material, strengthening it if it is worn thin with thread from the white cord. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of rope material and speaks in praise of content with any kind of rope material, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, it would not be, Budain, those of my disciples who are wearers of rag robes taken from a dust heap, and who wear robes that are worn thin, or those who, collecting shreds of cloth from a cemetery, a rubbish heap or shop and who, having made up an outer cloak, wear it, who would revere, respect, esteem, honor me for this behavior, of mine, and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of alms food and speaks in praise of content with any kind of alms food, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, there are disciples of mine, Budain, who eat only what is received into the begging bowl, who walk on an uninterrupted alms round, pleased with scraps of food, these, having gone in amid the houses, even if offered a seat do not consent to accept it. But I, Budain, sometimes eat where I am invited, rice, rice gruel, rice from which the black grains have been removed, a variety of curries, a variety of condiments. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of alms food and speaks in praise of content with any kind of alms food, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, it would not be, Budain, those of my disciples who eat only what is received into the begging bowl, who walk on an uninterrupted alms round, pleased with scrap of food, and who, having gone in amid the houses, even if offered a seat do not consent, to accept it, who would revere, respect, esteem and honor me for this behavior, of mine, and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of lodging and speaks in praise of content with any kind of lodging, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, there are disciples of mine, Budain, who live at the roots of trees, in the open air, and who for eight months do not go under a roof. But I, Budain, sometimes stay in gabled houses, smeared inside and out, sheltered from the winds, having door bolts that fasten and windows that close. The recluse Gotama is content with any kind of lodging and speaks in praise of content with any kind of lodging, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, it would not be, Budain, those of my disciples who live at the roots of trees, in the open air, and who for eight months do not go under a roof, who would revere, respect, esteem and honor me for this behavior, of mine, and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence. The recluse Gotama is aloof and speaks in praise of aloofness, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, there are disciples of mine, Budain, who have gone to remote lodgings in the forest and who, having plunged into remote lodgings in forest and jungle, stay there, these. Return to the midst of the order every half month for the recitation of the obligations. But I, Budain, sometimes stay crowded round by monks and nuns, men and women lay disciples, by kings and king's chief ministers, by leaders and disciples of other sections the recluse Gotama is aloof and speaks in praise of aloofness, if it were for this, Budain, that disciples would revere, respect, esteem and honor me and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence, it would not be, Budain, those of my disciples who have gone to remote lodgings in the forest and who, having plunged into remote lodgings in forest and jungle, stay there, 
but who return to the midst of the order every half month for the recitation of the obligations, who would revere, respect, esteem and honor me for this behavior, of mine, and, revering and respecting, would live in dependence. It is thus, Budayan, for these five ways of behaving, that disciples do not revere, respect, esteem, and honor me and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. But there are, Budayan, five other things for which disciples revere, respect, esteem, and honor me and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. What are the five? One as to this, Budayan, disciples of mine admire the higher morality, and think, the recluse Gotama is of moral habit, he is possessed of the most excellent body of moral habit. Inasmuch, Budayan, as disciples of mine admire the higher morality, and think, the recluse Gotama is of moral habit, he is possessed of the most excellent body of moral habit. This is the first thing, Budayan, for which disciples of mine revere, respect, esteem, and honor me and, revering and respecting, live in dependence. Two and again, Budayan, disciples of mine admire the surpassing knowledge and vision, and think, when the recluse Gotama says, I know, I see, it is because he does know, does see. The recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma from super-knowledge, not without super-knowledge, the recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma that has a causal basis, not without a causal basis, the recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma that is convincing, not unconvincing. Inasmuch, Budayan, as disciples of mine admire the surpassing knowledge and vision, and think, when the recluse Gotama says, I know, I see, it is because he does know, does see. The recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma from super knowledge, not without super knowledge, the recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma that has a causal basis, not without a causal basis. The recluse Gotama teaches Dhamma that is convincing, not unconvincing. This is the second thing, Budayan, for which disciples of mine revere, respect, esteem, and honor me and, revering and respecting, live in dependence.